welcome guys welcome guys welcome to the isaac show today um it's great to have you um of course we had a little um technical issue but um it's been resolved now so jide will be joining us very shortly um our guest on the show once again is jide ayegbushi is the um founder and ceo of um, edusco africa you know when it comes on board it would let us know what edusco africa is all about um but for now welcome to the show and thanks for joining us um um so while we wait for g day um i would also like to say that um as the interview progresses feel free to ask your questions if you have a question hello tife inspires thank you for joining <laughs> thank you for joining um i must say this i appreciate every single person that joins the show it's well appreciated myself and the team deeply appreciate you all right so um thank you very much guys for joining so like i said our guest for today is jide ayegbusi um he will be joining us very very shortly and then we'll be going into the details of his story you know um and once again the isaac show is basically a personalized show that delves into the life story and the business story of African achievers, innovators, creators, disruptors. You know, and when we say disruptors, we're talking about people who are doing amazing things in different across different sectors. And when we also say amazing things, we mean people who are creating um, solutions out of difficulties. Okay, we all know how africa has been painted and tainted but irrespective of where we are and how we are there are people who are doing powerful amazing things who are solving our problems in disruptive ways these are the people that this show actually looks to celebrate For joining you are deeply deeply appreciated right so while we were in for an amazing time today I promise you um, the good thing about sharing people's stories is that we are able to pick secrets we are able to pick principles we are able to pick the reasons why they are how they are and we are also able to pick the lessons behind the powerful brands that they have created you know and that's the exact reason why this show was actually created hello praise hey Praise, praise. How you doing? Good to good to see you here. Thanks for joining. All right. So, so that's the essence of the show, basically, right? You know. And of course, if you have people that you love us to interview on this show, feel free to drop their name. quickly actually go through um, his profile a disruptor at the intersection of marketing education and technology now GDI which is a Nigerian and is the founder and CEO of um, edusco.com an edtech startup based in Lagos Nigeria um, GDI is passionate about um, quality and affordable education in Africa so he founded edusco to help low and middle income uh, Um, Nigeria's largest convergence of parents and their teenagers to ensure um, children's physical, academic, 
career and emotional well-being now edusco is one of the top seven most viable startups selected by the nigerian economic summit group in 2017. the startup also made the top 10 finalists at the seed star world event in lagos nigeria in 2019. um excuse me they have also made the country finalists for the mest africa um challenge 2020 you know that's a very very great fit um, early in 2020, Jide was one of the 25 young founders selected across the world to participate in the Westerwell Young Founders Program in Berlin, Germany. Now, prior to founding Edusco, Jide has more than a decade demonstrated remarkable abilities and achievements in brand management, education, man um, education marketing, channel management. Right now, um, um, I don't know why he hasn't joined. Um, today, if you can see, um, if you can see and hear this, simply request to join the show so I'm able to bring you on the show. All right. Simply request to join the show so I'm able to bring you on the show. Okay. So, but let me also search for you so that I can bring you on the show, possibly from here. G D I A G C. Okay. I don't know what's happening today. Invite. Not sure exactly what to do yet. Oh, it's breaking. Sorry about that. Okay. Go live with you. Yeah. Finally. This is happening. Hi, Isaac. I, it seems like I just um, wow. I have to use my phone. I, I was trying sure to use my to do I was trying to use my my it's laptop, great. but it's not just working. So Oh, I, you were I, trying to use use your laptop earlier. Yes, yeah, my laptop. So right. but now yeah. Now you're using so I get the lesson there is that uh, I'm not sure that laptops are enabled for IG Live right I mean, yet. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, welcome to the show, guy. <laughs> welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? You? Um, awesome. I'm doing amazing. Um, how is it at your end? <laughs> Yeah, fine. Of course, you know, you know the hustle. Um, don't tell me. So it's real, right? So, okay. Yeah. Don't tell me you are joining. Don't tell me you are joining us from a bar. Oh, what am I seeing by? <laughs> this, this is not a bar. <laughs> <laughs> don't get, don't get it too steady. Can they stand? Can they stand us here too? Is it big or small? How far? What's happening? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, uh, Isaac, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Today is Sunday, <laughs> and everybody is, um, uh, I mean, <laughs> reflecting over what they've learned in the church today. So I don't know what you're saying. I don't, I don't understand. So are you telling me that? Anyway, let me, I mean, let, let me just <laughs> let me just let you be. All right. Okay. Yeah. So once again, it's good to have you on here. Um, Thank you. you have to disrupt our technology for the first time, you know. But I mean, finally, we're we're here. Um, I don't know what, but can you can you see me? Or can you hear me very clearly? Very clearly, I can see you. I can hear you. I can feel you. Okay, I can see you, but your your voice seems to be breaking at times. Can you close your mic? You know, maybe my internet. Hello, but... exotic beverage. My the power woman. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. 
Yes, I can hear you. Can you okay, hear me? Right. So let's, 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 I can hear you now. It's much better. All right, all right. guys. So welcome again. So, um, so um, without further ado, um, the industry is about African disruptors, innovators, creators. And what we basically do is um, we talk in depth about their stories, the stories behind their lives, and of course, how they have been able to create the brands that they built or the movements that they have built or they are building, basically. You know, so you are um, one of the disruptors at the forefront of um, education technology in Africa. Well, Desi, welcome to the show. Welcome on the show. Yeah, so, you, so you're one of the disruptors um, at the forefront of education technology in Africa, uh, particularly in Nigeria. So tell, 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 I mean, tell us how did this all begin? Like, why did you choose? This industry, why did you choose this? Why is education so important to you? Let's start from there. Yes, uh, so thank you very much. So, um, I mean, education is, uh, I think the question, is, the question should be why education is important, really. So, and I think that education is, is everybody's business, right? So, uh, but for me as a person, I'm passionate about this um, about this case because of the fact, because of my own experience, really. I, you know, I didn't have uh, quality education growing up, right? So it was it was a bit difficult for for myself and my siblings, right? So whatever you see now, I will confidently say uh, it's a product of um, self development, right? So so and I made it like like a goal, like you know, like something very paramount that I must contribute my parts to facelift, you know, African education ecosystem, which is what brought me to whatever it is that I'm doing today, right? So I'm passionate about education because I think that education is, like someone said, is a passport to the future, right? And um, uh, education is a liberator, right? So education is the only tool that can lift us, I mean, lift us from poverty. So if you're talking about how do we lift the next generation uh, out of poverty, uh, like the federal to lift, um, say, uh, um, 100 million people out of poverty over the next 10 years. Without education, this is practically impossible. So these are some of the things yeah. that I that are dear to me, and this is why I'm in that space yeah. called education. Amazing, amazing. Okay, so now we'll go back to the beginning and start all over again, and start you know, and then get into the story, right? Uh, so I understand that uh, you are you are um, somewhat a marketing. Um, professional, um, I don't want to use the, the word expert because I think that word has been um, abused, yeah, right? Abuse, You're a marketing yeah. uh, professional, marketing guru, yeah. you even have, a, have an MSc in marketing, right? Um, yeah. So how did this journey, I also understand that you've worked with some um, companies before you actually um, initi initiated, founded or started EduSchool. So tell us about yeah. your experience proud founding EduSchool. I mean, what were your job experiences like before EduSchool? Yeah. So, um, before, immediately I left school, right, so I joined uh, this insurance company, uh, uh, and I was doing this exactly. for them. Um, you left the um, uh, University of Lagos, right? That's yeah, so I, degree, I right? after my, I'm a, after my first degree, so I, after my first degree, I joined this insurance company, uh, and I was with them for one year before I went for my NYC, right? So, uh, during, NY, during NYC, I... I was focused on career because I read psychology in my first degree. So I was very, I was very passionate about uh, career and all of those things. And now, because while yeah. I was in secondary school, right? So um, a lot of us had issues with, you know, choosing the right career paths, right? So, and I just felt that, you know, it would it would make it would make a lot of sense if I if I was. You know, teaching kids how to choose careers, what 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 right careers are for them, you know. How or you are good at what particular subject. So I was I was doing that in Bayesa. And that also, you know, endeared me a bit to what's going on or what was going on in the education space at, at, at that point in time. So before I left NYC, I published a book on career, right? It was called the Simplified Career, Simplified career Plan for Schools, right? And that book brought me coming back of the year in Bayesa State. Right, so, uh, but immediately after that, um, you, wrote, after, 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 you wrote the book. You wrote, sorry, sorry, Scott. You wrote the book um, before you started serving, or you wrote the book while you were serving. Why I was serving? We did that one. Why I was serving? So, we didn't so want. Like, yes, yes. So, okay. Yeah, because okay. I saw, because I saw, I saw, I saw that that gap, 
right? You know, in trying to, in trying to, for kids, in, for, for kids who are trying to find the right career path for themselves, right? So starting with what okay. subject do you need to really know? You know, what, um, at, at what level do you need to pass the subject? To be able to, for, for instance, someone want to study, say, medicine, medicine, for instance. So what do you need to do? So what subject do you need to know? And how, what, 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 yeah. what, what grades do you need to have, right? What are the steps you need to take to study medicine? So how long is medicine? So these are, you know, these are simple things that some of these uh, students didn't know why I was serving, right? So, and I did a book on that. And it was very amazing. So the book got circulated all around by Esa State. And that got me coming about the wow. year. I was celebrated, yeah. So, and of course, I was also offered um, an automatic employment, but because that terrain was not really, uh, um, like, so somewhere I would want to stay. So, like, the following week, I, I, I found myself in Lagos. And, you know, why I was in Lagos, why, when I came back, came back to Lagos, I was already thinking that, okay, you know what, maybe you were just, I was just going to focus on this career thing, you know, do my business and all of those. But, of course, you know, yeah. also, in, also in Lagos is real, right? So, sometimes you're coming from, you know, a state and you think that your idea will be fantastic when you get to another state. So, I got to Lagos and I was really embarrassed with my idea, right? So, I got very hungry. <laughs> I got very broke. Lagos, and I remember... Lagos, I remember you said? <laughs> I said Lagos start you down. To be <laughs> you get. <laughs> you know, Lagos taught me. Lagos taught me some lessons, right? So, I got very broke. I got very, you know, hungry, and I just remember my CV. <laughs> so, um, so I remember my CV, you know. So I, 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 uh, and I started applying for 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 jobs. So interestingly, jobs, okay. yeah. So interestingly, I did this internship with um with an advertising agency. And I was retained, right? So, I mean, yes. But while I was working in that in that advertising agency, I was as a brand strategist. So I was you know, working on a, a lot of educational focus, education focus brands, and that also endeared me yeah. further to education. I don't know if you, have, you know, I don't know if you're following the trajectory now. You know. Um. So I was in that. I was the 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 advertising was one of the leading advertising. Agencies in Nigeria, like top five, Media Plus. I don't know if anybody knows Media Plus yet. So, yeah. if any of your followers know Media Plus, yeah, I want yeah, to say hi. Well. Yeah. So it was like one of the leading advertising agencies back in the days. So I was oh, there. Okay. Yeah, I was there. So doing brand strategy, and I was working on a lot of education focused brands. Um. Then, I left them after like three, four years. I left them for uh, another advertising agency doing education marketing fully. Right, so um, I did another one year with those guys. Then I moved to Vitaphone. So I was just, I was, I was just manager. Yeah. You said? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I was, so I was sales manager at Vitaphone, uh, and then it was at Vitaphone that you know the idea to to, to start at Edu actually came up. But you know, I realized that mm. you know, I needed, and yes, I needed you know funding, I needed money, I needed a lot of things to to really start the business. So. I had to start saving. So, and then, of course, what, I mean, what year was this? What, what year was this? And what got you thinking in that regard, in that realm? I mean, yeah, so, was it? I mean, was it that you put on an idea on a particular day, or something happened to you, or you had an era come over? How did the idea come? Yeah. So, so um, why was with why why was with um, the the education marketing company, right? So I used to like organize um, one of the biggest education um, shows in Nigeria. Then it was called um, uh, International Schools and Colleges Exhibition, right? So uh, that um, exhibition, you know, usually brings together uh, schools, and they will invite parents to come, you know, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you know, interact with the schools. But we had a lot of issues, yeah. despite you know very huge amount of money we spent, you know, campaigning for for the show, for people to come on board, and all of those. We still got very little yeah. turnout, and in number of parents you know told me specifically that if this had been online if this had been online that would have been fantastic fantastic for them so at the corner of the office you know that they would just you know sit down and then and it got me thinking that how do we solve this problem right how do we solve this problem? and then mm. yes yes and, I, you know, and and yeah and that was how i began to you know not show the idea to you know to do something in that line but but of course, like 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 um, uh, like uh, Zuckerberg said, um, ideas don't come fully, fully, fully prepared, fully made, right? So you're not fully sure, formed. right? So, yeah. Yes, fully formed. Thank you. So so um, it was just a very rough idea in my head, but you know, I just I I threw it away, right? 
So I went to Vitaphone. But when I got to Vitaphone and I and I, and I, and I, and I sat down, like, I think it's time for me to just really go go into this. So that was when I, I started. But I didn't actually start immediately because, um, you know, like I said, I needed phone, I needed money and all of those. So, so I was saving up. So in 2015, so we're gathering data on schools, we're gathering data on parents, we're trying to find out what, you know, what parents want, how they want it, and the schools, what the, what the, the enrollment challenges that they, are, that they were having at, some, at, at that time. And so and then we got enough data. And in 2016, we became very operation, operational and I left, and I left Vitaphone. Amazing. So you left Vitaphone. Now, yeah. what gave you the confidence to leave a, a job that was paying you a uh, salary at the end of the month for something that you weren't sure the world was ready for, that you weren't even heading? Or were you heading at this point in time when you left by that home for at school? I, I, I think, trust me, people thought I was crazy when I was leaving. My colleagues thought I was crazy because, you know, so at right. Vitaphone, I... I at Vatafone, I had a car to myself, official car. You know, at a very young age, you know, a tender age, you have it, you know, you have it. Someone have it. So I had a car to myself. You know, I was practically living on a company. So I had internet, I had my laptop, you know. Uh, the way, you know, the feeding was amazing, you know. So everything was just very, very well for someone like myself to say, you know what, you want to, you want to go start. So wow. people thought I was crazy. They were telling me, Did they, have you thought about this thing that you're doing? Plus, you know, entrepreneurship is about risk taking, right? So sometimes you look at the whole thing and you just have that gut, right? To, to just want to start. Yeah. And it's a risk. I mean, life is a risk. But I already saw the opportunity. I already I knew that it was going to become something very big, right? Because I, you know, I saw the gap. So, so, and. Yeah, and then and then you know I left and and so I, the first the first the first one year was very rough for me. So you know someone you know trans transitioning from uh, a you know a nice job, right? You know yeah. with a car with all of those things and uh, and then you know now coming to you know, to another terrain where you have to for every penny that you that you that you make you have to account for it in terms of you know I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So you if you don't make any money you're on your own. <laughs> so the no company is paying any salary. I don't pay yourself. So it was really very tough, you know, the first year. But you know, we just had that 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 goal, that mission, a vision that it will become something very big. And and trust me, like um uh um I think like like a year down the line, we broke even. It, you know, it was amazing. So we broke even. Wow. Because, because yes, we broke we broke even because it was something at that point very something very innovative. You know. Nobody was doing it, and it was also at the right time, right? Because the internet penetration was becoming very, I mean, not too long ago. So, like, 2016, the internet penetration was very high. So, a lot of parents and the, 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 uh, the, the middle class, you know, you know, were already, you know, like, up in their game. Okay. So, so how, did you, mm. how did you solve the parts? Now, you were a greenhorn at that time, whether you like it or not. You just left a yes, big sure. job to, sure. you know, sure. venture into ethics. So how did you solve the, I mean, who built your platform at that time? How did you solve the tech parts? How did you solve the marketing? How did you solve, you know, getting um, resources together, listing schools? Yeah, so how how was it with that process? So so uh, for marketing, marketing, you know, um, is just very natural to me. So I love marketing. So marketing has been so i i just love it so it 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 i i i would say that you know if it, it flows in my veins right so it's not something that um that i see so i'm having fun while i'm doing marketing you get so but for other areas right so why 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 i was with uh, media plus yeah to me to me how's it going yeah to me um i attended the same school with toby uh at the kula jash university to me yeah it's nice having you here Toby was such an awesome uh, a lady back the day. <laughs> I'm sure she is anyway. So your, your guy is. found you even here. Trust me. Yeah. Okay, so so you you left the job, you market had, psychology. Um, so Mr. Marketing. <laughs> market psychology, right? You you brought me yeah, because I I yeah. yeah, I I I read psychology then, psychology my first degree. Push my guy, let's put that base football. Definitely. But then what yeah. happened to the tech part? What happened to uh um, the so for so yeah, so for the tech part? So how yeah, so for the yeah, how did you break so, from there? Yeah, so, so for the tech part, so I while I was in a plus, so, so there was this guy I met. Um the guy was the one you know building our uh, our solution for us. When I, yeah. when I so when I was, yeah. was ready to start um 
Uh, at this school, I called the guy up like, Tony, please, could you, could you help with this um, solution? This is what actually what I have in mind. Can you help? Can you build? And he said, yes, that, that it will build. So, and interestingly, so I couldn't, I couldn't afford to pay the guy once. So I paid him like, like over a period of six months, like instrumentally, <laughs> right? So the guy built the platform and it was ready. So uh, the platform was built. It was one of the challenges that we, that we had was getting schools to get to to get to, to be listed on the platform right so you know they, they um uh, there's they this saying that thing is the only constant thing right but people are also are very averse to change right so so the school owners were comfortable with you know with their traditional means of getting that information across to parents right yeah and, and there, were, there were a lot of there were a lot of pushbacks from those schools like don't worry we are good we are good we are good and then you know why you're just coming from nowhere and then you're calling schools and like who is this person and you know you know sometimes these school owners you know they are very um uh, uh I, I don't know um then they, 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 they certain parts of they, they, they said they said a type of personality that they want to see in someone that yeah. they, that will operate in this space so it's now that when it's now yeah. that we you know a lot of us that are young and now trying to make them losing up a bit <laughs> before yeah. it was very tight so you have to be someone who's wearing one big suit yeah. you know belly you, know, wear kind of particular kind of person. you get you what i mean welcome in the you get what yeah. i mean so like yeah. this young guy this you know this dude just coming from nowhere and he's saying he's running an education marketing company so who, who is he so know? that was the first issue i had <laughs> like who is this guy <laughs> like who is this guy so so but you know but beyond who is this guy they saw a platform that was working they saw a platform that mm -hmm. would take their school to the next level right so yeah. so so, it, so it, the argument now shifted from who is this guy to ah it seems this guy has something for us so we better we better just grab and then yeah yeah okay. so 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 in terms of digital marketing we're leveraging on social media facebook um because we also add little uh you know little budgets we're not doing a lot on uh, sem or seo but we're just doing uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. So, and then we, when we, we we started listing schools. So I got I got um um someone to also join, to also, to also join us. And the, the lady was in charge of school listing, uh, and then I also got two interns, right? So also helping out with you know with a few things. Then because I also had my connect in terms of you know um you know when you when you operate for some time in a, in a space, you get to have some people that you can always call. Right, so so I had yeah. a guy who I could yeah. call for creatives. I had a guy who I could call for, you know, uh, video. I had a guy who I could call for, uh, uh, you know, creatives and all of those things. So it made it easier for me a bit, you know, uh, starting off. How what point did you register the domain um, at school.com? Can you remember the very day that I, had? I I registered the domain in twenty fifteen. Well, I said we still right? Yes, yes, why yes, why still uh, yeah, why it was it was it was it was actually tough for us to come up with that. So we're looking for what domain would would would, would be appropriate. So we're looking for we're looking for school listing, school, all those school school things, and it was not you know all those domains that had been registered at that point in time. And then and then thank God we chose a do school, really. Because if you had chosen those yeah. uh those random school names, yeah, we are, if you had chosen those random names, would have just we would have just been boxed in. Right, so like because edusco.com has grown from you know from a listing platform to a, 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 an education yeah, marketing company. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah, so so absolutely. that name will actually box us box us inside inside in already. Yeah. So edusco does um edusco basically helps um parents to assess um um school options, you know, to have access to almost uh um every school across the country on one platform from the center and from the comfort of their homes right yes yes now so mm -hmm. beyond this they also get to they also get to enjoy um um what's it called now school loans for instance um i want my child to 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 i mean my child is ready to actually commence school i don't want to um, um go through the stress of having to visit school one by one so i can just log on to your platform um and just could come you know from the comfort of my home i assess schools look at their features their benefits what they are their offerings and then i'm also able to assess loans right so aside these two things um what else does Edusco do uh so um you're right so it's a platform uh, just is a platform where parents are able to make informed school choices for their kids 
and of course also able to Absolutely. access and uh, uh, school fees discounts right so we negotiate discount very yeah. discounts on behalf of our parents and they're also able to access yeah. um, education um, funding education loans so uh but aside yeah. this like you mentioned so we've grown you know from that to becoming uh, uh, uh an education marketing company right and we we work with uh, we work with um, a number of brands you know uh, across the world right so brands who have yeah. products for the education space uh we work with the likes of british council work with macros work with um um uh, uh uh, Britannica in the UK, you know, in the US, you know, also the same, uh, same, um, same thing. So in Nigeria, we also have a big brand like Bonvita, like uh, uh, you know, Sterling Bank, like some of these, you know, institutions, right, that are trying to access this space. You know, access to to the education space is actually a very daunting, very daunting, and very humongous tax. Yeah. Even with so much money, you can't yeah. do it. If you if, if you think you're yeah. a big brand and you just want to access, I, I can access schools, I can access parents. Then go ahead. You will burn your fingers, right? So, in most of most most yeah. times, they 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 they, 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 they leverage on the, the network that we have, the uh, data that we have. So you are you are like the middleman between them and the ecosystem in Nigeria. Yes, basically, exactly, exactly. Amazing. So now yeah. you've done this for for years now. Um, um. So, but as we speak right now, yeah. Since inception till now, how, how much has Edusco made in terms of overall revenue? I mean, so far so good. I was the range. I, I see, and you and you would want me to say this on on here. It's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> so you want you want people to begin okay, to, so, so uh, you, to uh, uh, nobody's going to chase you around. Uh, no no worry. No, we will not make so we will not make so much <laughs> money. So I mean, you're still growing. So let let me let leave it at that. <laughs> no, the best one to do that. So I, I, what I what I, what I will tell you, I see. What I will tell you is okay. we're not doing bad day. We're not doing badly, so Ali will be. I mean, it's 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 um it's what I feed on. It's what is what um you know what, what people guys that are working with me guys, guys that are working with me is where they also get their revenue. So I mean, so everybody is fine, but um how much we make every year? I'll I'll leave I'll leave okay, that okay, to what's, you. What's, 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 what's the <laughs> average of your annual revenue? Okay, let's say annual. What's your what's the average of your annual revenue currently? Yeah, let's give it that. Average your annual revenue. It can it be? Can it be average annual revenue? So if I tell you average annual revenue, I've, I've told you how much we how much we make every year. I mean, so 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 I think you know what I was know what I was saying, right? Okay. Hopefully, Edusco yeah. can be. Uh, hopefully, we we Edusco can become uh, say, um, uh, 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 a public 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 limited liability company, right? So so once we trade in the, in, in, in in the stock exchange, then it becomes very open. So I won't, they won't be they won't be they won't be anything for you to ask me how much we make every year. So you just go there and just go access the information. Okay, what's boom, okay, you have right, it. No problem. What's your current what's your current valuation? Current, val current valuation, um, yeah. Current uh, current valuation we you know valuation is also um uh it's also a very tricky thing so sometimes uh, yeah, yeah, yeah so but, but our minimum valuation it's around um uh 25 million dollars minimum interesting wow man uh, it's good we are friends i mean at least we are friends at this level like, you know <laughs> well, you, well, you know it's valuation right <laughs> I'm, I, yeah, I, know it's I didn't tell you i've made 25 million dollars whether you like it or not, you know, as time goes by and as you continue yeah. to do what you're doing, the valuation only can only get better. So that's why. okay, amazing, amazing. Now let's let's get into the nitty nitty gritty. What's 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 like the what's been the your most um um significant accomplishment when it comes to Edusco since you started Edusco? What's what's like the biggest thing you're proud of that um, Edusco has done as an organization? So so um um the biggest thing for me, right, uh is not about um you know how much we made or about um about you know starting a company and being and being profitable. It is the lives that we really imparted, right? So um we, over the last over the last four years for instance um we've been able to help over five hundred thousand kids you know access good schools right so for me it's, wow. it's like one of the biggest achievements that um that i can never think of yeah. right so we've been able, also been able to yeah. help over four thousand schools get visible get enrolled you know put put them out there. yeah you know and, and trust me these schools are getting you know 
like massive traction on the platform. And then beyond, beyond, beyond listing schools and also, you know, happy parents uh, access good schools. Um, um, we, we also, you know, almost all the time, you know, have one or two intervention programs for the, for the echo, for the players in the ecosystem. Like for instance, um, Thanks for joining. Yeah. yeah. So for instance, Sorry. every, for, for instance, every year we have uh, this summit called the business of education summit. So it brings together schools, country, education entrepreneurs across the country. It's a very massive uh, summit. So um, we get very, you know, global speakers, global speakers across the world to come and engage uh, with stakeholders in, in the Nigerian education, education ecosystem. And we're beginning to get even interest from other African countries, Ghana, Kenya, you know, sub saharan African countries. And that, that, that's also very, something that I'm also very proud of, you know, uh, as, 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 as a player in, the, in this space. So we we're, 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 so we're, we're contributing our quota in the space. We're, we're, we're changing the game. So we, we, we also raise the bar, right? And, and this, and it can only get better, because I've discovered that this space should not be left to government alone, right? So most times we think mm. about how, how bad the ecosystem is, how bad the education system is, how bad, how bad yeah. it is, how difficult it is to get good teachers, how you know, how dilapidated our schools are. You know, we just keep complaining. Yeah. But are we going to just yeah. keep you know, passing the box? Can we, we do something about this? Like what we are doing, uh, uh, Isaac. You know, something I'm very proud of, right? So you know, to get the next, you know, one million kids, you know, to learn, right? So into school, yeah. yeah, to school, you know. So I mean, so it's amazing. So and we need to begin to do some of these things as young people because whether we like it or not, the older generation are phasing out and it's going to be us. So are we going to be looking, yeah. are we going to start also start complaining about bad it is? So like, you know, for me, I, I sometimes complain about how, you know, how bad I, my education was when I was in secondary and primary school. But I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't, <laughs> to complain. I can't complain forever, well, right? I need to do something about the generation that is coming behind. Yeah. And this is one of the things that really, that's, that, that's that keep us that, that's, that's interestingly and amazingly the, the reason why we actually do um, this show because um, at the end of the day you get to realize that on a serious note almost almost a hundred percent like um let's i mean let's just say i mean because we want to be hopeful 99 percent of nigerians actually practically complain about the problems um that we um, face yeah. you know yeah so, but then yeah. if we all keep complaining and yeah. um, almost none of us is actually looking the other way about yeah. how can we solve some of our problems by ourselves. Then we might as well, you know, keep the problem for life, you know. So, yeah. but as long as um, some, some of us, um, some, some people like you, you know, are able to look within and say, okay, what do I have? What can I do with what I have? What's, how can I leverage my giftings, my talents, my skills? You know, how can those come together to solve one of the problems that my country has? Yeah. That's where we can then begin to actually... Ab ab absolutely. So, and then we'll be shocked Absolutely. what is actually possible. Because we can actually accomplish what we can ever imagine. You know, absolutely. so... And that's why we try to bring out and, um, of course... Um, talk about stories of people like you who are actually doing something in their own little way, right? So fantastic. Now let's let's talk about let's talk about the education system. Do you really think um, um this question has been on my own mind for quite a while? You know, uh, especially after this uh, whole COVID nineteen pandemic. You know, so I realized that now it is it is um suddenly obvious to us <laughs> whether we like it or not that Nigeria's education system has failed, like completely, like completely failed. Why? Because uh, oh, almost 50 million, um, if not more than, you know, students are unable to get schooled as we speak right now across the country. 50 million is not, not a small number. Now, my question is this. Now, even um, after, I mean, post-COVID, when schools finally resume, do you really think that um, we can achieve sustainable education we can, do, you, do you think that uh, the nigeria's the nigerian education system is able to resolve um our education demand in nigeria right now, currently and when i say education system i mean the brick and mortar system like the normal school you know you go to school do you think that um that is still uh, the way that we can solve this problem because right now of course you know that we have uh, more students than the schools can accommodate, you know. So, what's your perspective yeah, on this? Yeah, Isaac, Isaac and it's, it's very terrible. So, we're, we're sitting on a ticket time bomb, right? So, um, and it's unfortunate at, at the moment. 
um, um, let's start from our universities. So, um, uh, about 1.5 million students will be just yeah. for say 500,000 seats. That's all our universities, all our tertiary institutions can annually. annually. So, the rest of 1 million, the rest of the 1 million guys are going to sit back at home. Yeah. That is one. Exactly. Now, don't also forget that our population is growing like, <laughs> like seriously. So uh, we're going to become like, uh, like the third biggest nation country in the world by 2050. Yeah, third biggest. Yeah. So and yeah. how, are we, how, how are we preparing for all these, you know, uh, explosives? If you ask me, I can't see any traces. Okay. Now the 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 um uh, I can't see any any trace. So uh, the um UNESCO says, for instance, that. 26% of the budget should be devoted to education. We we mm -hmm. we only do above 10%. Yeah. Get to get to a, a typical public school in Lagos, for instance, you will see like over 100 students in a class that is meant for 25 students. Absolutely. Right? So I mean, our public education system is in shambles, and everybody knows this, right? But if you also swing, yeah. look at the other side of the coin, and you take a look at the private education system. Those guys are doing very well, I must tell you. They are doing very well. So uh, mm. a, 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 a good private school in Nigeria can compete with any school anywhere in the world. I don't want to mention really? names right here. Right, yes. Yes. I don't want to mention any names there, but some of our schools, some of our private schools can compete anywhere. Interesting. Yeah. So, so but, but the education the education inequality for how long will that continue so it means that the, the sons and daughters yeah. of the rich will continue to have quality education in the country and the daughters and exactly. daughters and, and you know sons of the poor will continue to stay yeah. in that abject uh going to wallow in that abject poverty and they continue to have very poor exactly. bad education how long will that continue I see, that is that, that is that what is me up at night because that is that, that is where many of us are coming from Right, yeah, that's where some of us are yeah. coming from. So, what what are we going to do as private yeah, exactly. as as you know what can we do? Because government leave let's let's just leave government. Let leave government. What can okay. we do? So let me pose, so let me pose this question to you. I mean, you've said it all exactly. I mean, what I was trying to get out of you, you know, uh, yeah. the reality uh, that is staring us in the face, you know, because yeah. <laughs> it's so it's so it's so strong. Like if I share my personal story. Um, I mean, I mean, I personally have not been able to, to really I mean, get over it. Uh, that when I go back to where I grew up, I mean, the, the community in which I grew up, there are, there are some friends that I was fond of, I like very fond of while I was growing up. You know, right now when I go to that neighborhood, uh, nothing has changed. I just gets very nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. See, I see, I see, I see, I see. I attended a, a primary school where we were speaking. Dialect, not even Yoruba. We're speaking dialect. My wow. public, my, my secondary school, we're speaking. <laughs> yes, we're speaking dialect. And if you go back to that, to those places, <laughs> nothing has changed. Wow, nothing has changed. Wow. So you no, know, sometimes we sit back in Lagos, mm. we sit back in Abuja and Port Harcourt, and we just think that the whole of Nigeria is like this. It's not. It's like that. It's crazy, man. It's it's it's, it's crazy. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. So my, it's, so it's, my, my question is. Beyond what the government has done, now beyond what the government is promising to do, like because um um uh, beyond um, the work that I do in the education space, now, um um primarily a media person, so I see the news almost every day. You know, I know you know. So beyond what the government said they have done, yeah. Let me put it that way. Beyond what they are what they are saying they will do. What, in your own opinion, do you think is the fastest most realistic solution to solving Nigeria's education problem. Yes, right I, I see I see I see there's no fastest there's no fastest and there's no quick physics. Right. So uh, the uh, the problem is very pan it's very it's very endemic. It's, the, the problem is very endemic and it's very systemic. Right. And and yeah. and and there's there are also certain things that we need to actually also get right like for instance poverty right so in a country where like yeah. say 60 70 percent of the people live in abject, po in, in abject poverty so how do you want to get them yeah. to prioritize education you get what i mean mm -hmm. so when when when, when families yeah. are thinking about what to put in their bellies they're not going to be thinking about education yeah. it's only when you've eaten when you have satisfied that you can begin to think about education right education. Okay. yeah so how do we address how do we address poverty how do we ensure that 
our kids can feed? How do we how do we ensure that our parents can get jobs so that they can feed their kids and they can think about education? If if we are unable to address the situation, then it might be difficult to address other situations. Like I said, like mm. I said earlier, the problem is the rot in the education system is very systemic. So you can't see there's no one approach that fits, you know, fits all. Everything. Yeah. So 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 yeah. if I sit down here and tell you that this is a singular solution to this problem, I'm just joking. Mm. Joking. Mm. Right? Interesting. So, Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Ah, Polawe is there. Polawe, oh, okay. nice to see you. I agree. There's no, there, there's no quick solution. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Falawa is the CEO of uh, okay. uh, Teach Nigeria. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, good evening, madam. Um, I think I've, 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 I've seen her uh, somewhere, or probably was in a Zoom session where she spoke. And man, apt, very, very apt and insightful session that was. Welcome, ma'am. It's a pleasure to have you here. Okay, so my next question is this. Um, so Edusco started. Uh, when it started, you've gotten here, you've done amazing things, impacted lives and all of that. What is the future for Edusco? What are your plans? I mean, based on, I mean, you've seen the needs, the market is there, the needs are there. Like, uh, Nigeria, <laughs> for me, I actually think we are, I think we are, I think it's an emergency. Like, like, I, like I always say, it is an emergency. We are in a state of emergency as, I mean, as regards education in the country, in the continent right now. You know, uh, because the statistics are not getting better. It's getting, it's actually getting, it's worsening every single day, you know. And what even makes it more saddening is the fact that um, despite what the statistics are saying, um, it's not looking like the government is, I mean, doing, I mean, it's, it's interested in doing anything to actually make things better in that sector, you know. And unfortunately, no country can get better whose education system is, is in crisis like education how? education All is right. the basic so it's like it's fundamental it's a passport exactly. to the future like someone said so i mean if you can if you can't get our education system right then other sectors so education is like a drive is like a <laughs> driver practically so it drive, it drives right. other sectors yeah. right so yeah. just name yeah. it yeah. agriculture so, uh, which sector do you want to name in the country that that will not have human capital is there any that does not feed on education? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So, you know? so we can't get our education system even, right. Even and... development, even technology. If, if you don't have people who are educated and who can educate others, you are going nowhere, basically. You know? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So now when it comes to these issues, what is what is how is Educo positioning for the future? That's number one. How is education um Educo positioning to um um solve some of these challenges and um, of course you know we, you can't do everything but what are your plans basically five things you think yeah. to come. so so, so we, we like i told you earlier so we've discovered that access to education is, is a nightmare in sub-saharan africa majorly because of lack of finance yeah. right so quite a number of nigerian parents are passionate about education they're passionate about college education but they can't afford it and we all know that education is not cheap anywhere in the world in anywhere in the world it's not cheap. so so what we're doing that you know to solve that problem is to create access to finance for this for these parents so on our platform yeah. and assess finance to give your child the kind of education that you want right and this is amazing yeah so and that is what we want to continue to do so we we are looking at over a million kids in the next five years who uh yeah. who, who cannot afford quality education at the moment to be able to do that in the next five years yeah. and we are very positioned to solve, very positioned to to solving this this, this critical uh, uh gap i mean to bridge this critical amazing. Gap. Yeah. amazing amazing yeah. okay so um um we noticed you won um you won you recently won you I see, is this, is this you like money <laughs> i see you like money <laughs> You were one of the winners of the recently concluded um, Orange Corners Innovation Fund, um, which was fund initiated by the Kingdom of the Netherlands in partnership with Faith Foundation. You came second, uh, which got you um, over 35,000 um, euros, if I'm I not see, mistaken. I see. I see. Would, you, uh, would you just stop this? What are your, what are your plans to... Um, what, what plans do you have, basically, you know, in... Um, leveraging or utilizing these resources to take um to tackle um, nigeria's education problems and to take school to the next level what are your basic concrete plans yeah so so we're, we're investing in, te in technology we we're deepening um, you know um uh, uh investing in technology ensuring that uh, we we leverage ai to ai to 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 drive some of the things that we do and then um 
we'll also be investing in in, 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 in talent. So we're getting more more hands to help us solve some of these problems. Uh, we will deep, deep in our market in Nigeria, and of course, uh, begin to also penetrate Ghana. Uh, and then, um, what is um, it's, we're also investing in critical infrastructure. So uh, that 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 are like enablers for us to get to to the next level. So that's what we want to use the fund for. Amazing. What's what's the competition like for you? For I mean, in your not just the sector, but in the area that you're operating right now at school. What, who are your top competitors right now in the country? So uh, we have, of course, we like just like every other space, we have competitions. But I will not want to mention my yeah. name on, on here. So, uh, but we have competitions. But, uh, but interestingly, we 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 are ahead of uh, ahead of our competition. So when they're thinking. One, we're already at number five, number ten. So they keep, they, you know, they keep chasing us, right? So, and because we have um, a very strong, um, very innovative team, you know, behind behind the project, behind behind the business. So, yeah. So we have we have competition, and they're doing fine too. I mean, so I'm, I also, I mean, I must give them kudos because uh, uh, they keep on, they keep us on our toes, right? And that is one beautiful thing about competitions, right? So when you have very good competitors in the space, right? So people begin to sit down, do, do business properly. So, and that is what yeah. our competitions have, you know, done to us. So, yeah, and then, and, and I think we are, we are, we we have um, uh, our, our image out there is also very, very um, doing an amazing job for you know, I mean, for us. So, uh, uh, if anybody is thinking education, is thinking about schools, thinking about so most times they think about edu school, right? So, and that's that's we're grateful for. Yeah. Okay, amazing, amazing. Now, um, um. I'm talking about education technology in Africa. What's what do you think is the future um, of ed tech in Africa? Of course, we need a large market in globally and also across Africa, and it's also to a large extent or to an extent uh, quite a virgin market. What do you think um, the future holds for this sector right now? Y yes, and first and foremost, um, I must I must acknowledge the importance of education technology. I mean, the, in the space, right? So, um, uh, the the ed tech market will in market will be what over 350 you know, million, billion US dollars. Billion, yeah, billion US right. dollars, yeah. It's very huge, right? So, and a lot of opportunities in that space. But I think we need to begin to realize that technology is only an enabler. So sometimes Absolutely. I wonder, I just, I just get, I just get, I'm just sad when people begin to talk about technology as if technology would, would just come and then all our problems will be gone. Technology is yeah. only an enabler, right? So we need to see that technology in that line. So we use technology to scale, we use technology to do things efficiently, we use technology to but the problems are there, the real problems are there. Right. So for instance, yeah. look at my look at my platform. So I can only help parents get quality schools, right? But I will not be the one to teach in those schools. My my platform will not yeah, exactly. teach. My platform will not solve the transportation problem. My platform will not solve uh, 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 will not put food on the table of those families. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so, yeah. but my technology is actually doing a few things to, to, I mean, to alleviate some, of, you know, some of the problems, some of the challenges that we have in this space. So, we need to see technology in this line, and then I think, I think, that, so, so the future of technology, yeah, fantastic. But there are certain other issues that we also need to get right. For instance, in Nigeria, not just in Nigeria, sub-Saharan Africa generally, we have infrastructural issues, right? So. In, the, yeah. the internet yeah. problem is there. Uh, uh, data issue is you know is there. So, for instance, if I can afford, uh, say, uh, a smartphone, I can I can afford, uh, say, a good laptop for myself, and I can afford the yeah. data. But I cannot assure myself. I can assure myself a seamless seamless experience with 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 with, with the operators, right? Uh, you know, which is why. Exactly. Like this period, you 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 have a lot of issues around you know um, e-learning. So where kids are set up at home to learn via via their computers, and you know the old day they're shouting, "I can't hear you, ma! I can't hear you, ma! I can't hear you, ma!" The old day, <laughs> right? So so it's going to yeah. solve that problem for yeah. us, right? In respect, in, in as much as we are looking at you know how big uh, the future of you know technology or the future of ed tech is in the country, we also we also need to also see how we can solve some of those basic issues, right? Internet and data. And then effectiveness. And then its effectiveness is also largely dependent on the credibility of the people that holds its value chains, including yeah. network providers, you know, teachers, yeah, exactly, exactly. and the likes of so, 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 and then also, uh, when we are talking about technology, right? So, um, most times, you know, technology affects, you know, uh, the rich families. 
positively. So uh, the guy say in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, Otupo in Bayesa, I mean Otupo in, in Benue State, for instance. So you know how can that person access technology? In technology, yeah. part of Nigeria, how can they access technology? How can they access technology? They don't even have electricity. They don't have. Um, mm. So you know, so basic things that they need to have, they don't have those things. So how do they want to access, you know, technology to be able to learn? So I mean, now how do how do we how do we even reach those kind of people with quality education? Um, um, if we if they were to leverage education technology, yes. What, so what's so, the best solution to reach them? All lands must be on deck. So I love what Teach for Nigeria, for instance, are doing to solve that problem. So they send their teachers to the most and the remotest part of Nigeria, Nigeria rather, to go teach. Yeah. And I'm these guys are not just the guys that are that are that are that are that are that are just um that are that are teaching because of what they get. They are leaders. They are they are people. They are some yeah. of them are lawyers. Some of them are doctors. Some of them are well, you know. Well, these are guys that are passionate about education. And these are guys that are ready to mm. go to those rural areas, those remotest part of, of the country to go teach. Mm -hmm. So if we begin, if we have yeah. some of this intervention, I mean, you know, programs in place, I think it will go a long way, other than technology, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, absolutely. Okay, amazing, amazing. It's it's been it's been a um quite an eliminating session. Uh, okay, so I will ask you this um in closing, uh, or probably the um second to last question. Yeah. So um, now, when when it comes to education in in Nigeria, like, do you what do you think that? Um, of course, we can see the the efforts the uh, federal government is making at such a time as this um, amid this um, COVID nineteen pandemic. But in your opinion, what else do you think we can actually do right now? Uh, um, amid this lockdown to actually be able to deliver quality education across to children who are unable to access education and who are unable to access or afford you know um, um expensive education right now uh which this is this is this is um a time where governments need to take um, leadership role right so um i understand that um uh, you know quite um, uh, a lot has been done Right, like you know, subscribing to some platforms so that the guys in the rural areas can access uh, educational information. But I told you earlier that they can't do it because they don't have the technology to be able to access information. And then we also have yeah. some, you know, some some um, some instances in Lagos where they have to use radio, where they have to use uh, TVs uh, to to uh, to disseminate information, educational materials. Yeah. Yeah. To these, kids. these are these are good initiatives. Enough, right? are, yeah, these are good initiatives initiatives to ensure that. The inequality is not that it's not that huge. As I speak to you, quite a number of people are not learning. Like you, like you are farm students, you know, quite a number of people are not learning. Um, the 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 pandemic, what the pandemic has done, uh, is to also you know to widen the gap, you know, the the, the, the inequality between inequality yeah. between. Uh, in between between the you know between the rich families and the poor families so, um, so those those initiatives by by the government radio program radio i mean radio um uh, um uh, leveraging radio to teach the kids leveraging television to teach the kids i think they're fine um but a lot a lot still need to be done so uh, how do we the, how do we um uh some like i said solve some of these some of these other very important issue so beyond beyond education right so like i said like i said earlier in the rural areas where people are thinking about what to eat food to put on the table right so they won't they, nothing will come in their mind into their mind if those problems if those if they, if they can't eat right so how do we ensure that you know these families in these rural areas eat so that they can think about education I think that should be the closest. Okay. And and what I was discussing with someone some time ago, right? So you know, people are talking about getting our, our students back to school now, right? So.